Well, hello. It's Sunday evening, and that means um, I am live on the Dixie Bell Paint Company main page on Facebook, and my name is Cece from Cece Restyled. I'm a furniture artist and a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint Company. Um, I live in the Midwest in Indianapolis, so um, it's muggy and rainy and humid and all that fun stuff. So um, if you're hopping on, make sure you say hello and let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, tonight we're going to be doing a little bit of blendy blending. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I know you're shocked. But the great thing is about it is that every time you do it, you use different colors and you get a different look. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do some fun jewel tone colors tonight. Some really deep. Um, as you can see, we've got a little bit of um, in the navy and peacock happening here. And we're going to add some other colors. I don't know what. I don't know. Maybe you can guess. Maybe you can't. Um, let me turn my lights on here. Maybe get a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so um, let's talk about this, shall we? Okay, so this is a vintage Drexel French Provincial vanity slash desk. It didn't come with a mirror. Maybe it had one at some point and was a vanity. I don't know. Vanity, desk, whatever you really want it to be. I think vanity sounds way fancier than desk, right? So um, this piece actually came to me plain fronted, okay? Completely plain fronted. And um, I may have gone a little bit crazy with some would you bend on the fronts of these drawers. I'll pull you in a little closer in a second so you can see all the detail. Um, so all of these pieces that I use are either available on the Dixie Bell website or they will be soon and they are coming. Let me give you a little look at those pieces right quick that I added. Ooh, okay, so there's a little emblem and some swirly guys, some scrolls and some flowers. I See the little flowers I threw in there? See all the, just if you look real close, you'll find all the details. Just let's not, not pay attention to all the spots I missed on my first, um, uh, on my first coat because I was, it was really late at night and I was sleepy tired. So let's not, let's not call me out on the spots I missed. We'll get those on the second round. Um, so there's some more flowers and swirls. Um, the only thing I didn't add was this trim around the edge. So that trim was there. But everything else um, was added by yours truly and um, compliments of Would You Bend. If you are not familiar with the Would You Bend moldings, uh, <laughs> you need to be. They're a little bit addicting, okay? So they're really fun. So you can take um, plain fronts on anything. And when I say anything, I really mean just about anything, okay? You can Would You Bend um, <sighs> furniture, artwork, home, you know, your home decor, your, you can, would you bend your high heels? You can, would you bend your mailbox? You can, would you bend a clock? Um, I would you bend it a teapot? It, you know, your imagination really is the limit, um, where the moldings are concerned. So, um, if you're not familiar with them, they are precast moldings made out of wood pulp. So they're actually made from real wood products. They're eco-friendly. Um, they do everything wood, does they're drillable stainable paintable sandable um and you can also um heat them up with a hair dryer heat gun anything you know to, to heat them up and they will become pliable so that is how i put the widget bend on this this is curved i don't know if you can see it on the screen but it's curved so i added some heat and i was able to make my widget bend fit the curve it's magic okay so if you haven't tried it get some and try it it's kind of amazing so anyways we're gonna go ahead and jump right in now um to this piece okay so i was giving you a little background i gave this piece a good wipe down with some white lightning uh let it rinse it off let it dry and then i put two coats of slick stick which is an adhesion primer from Dixie Bell. Okay, so you need these pieces, these French provincial pieces are usually not real wood. They're usually some sort of laminate or, um, you know, formica top, um, 
so, it, they're not real wood and if you paint them it will scratch off pretty easily so um, um, the adhesion primer slick stick will help your paint adhere to non wood surfaces surfaces that are slick plastic glass metal laminate um, anything non wood okay um, it's kind of my saving grace because a lot of the pieces that I gravitate towards are not real wood unfortunately because they're kind of gaudy curvy all the fake carvings and details I like that kind of thing and I don't want to pass them up just because they're not real wood so slick stick saves my day most of the time um, the key is two coats and let it dry overnight okay the drying overnight part is key so if you're um not very patient like me you're gonna have to learn a little bit of patience uh, when, when you if you want your slick stick to be effective okay so anyways we're gonna go ahead and start on the drawers here so as you can see i went ahead and i did my first coat over the slick stick um in the navy and peacock so um we're ready to do our second coat which we are going to blend together Yes, it looks like a hot mess right now. If you're looking at this saying, what the heck is she thinking? That looks awful. It looks like puke. Somebody puked up some blueberries. That's what it looks like. That's not what it's gonna look like when we're all done, okay? Um, it gets uglier before it gets prettier, right? Um, so this is the first coat. And what I've done in order to prepare to blend my second coat is I've just kind of laid down where I want my colors to roughly fall. So as you can see, I just want kind of like a nice glowy, um, smiley, smiley face kind of shape here. And then I've got um, some kind of more random um, placements here because I, I wanted to kind of give the effect almost, almost I say of kind of a galaxy kind of feel, but without all the planets and stars and moons and all that stuff. But I wanted to have that real, um, uh, I don't wanna say dreamy, that kind of like spacey kind of vibe, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and grab our, in the Navy and our Peacock. So Peacock is actually, um, hopefully it's coming good, coming through good on the video because this color is so hard to photograph so hard to photograph and so i think in the navy also is so i picked the two hardest to photograph colors for this piece so hopefully you can see on the video how really bright and deep and pretty these colors are like they're very rich okay peacock and in the navy so i'm gonna go ahead and open both of those and have those ready to go when i'm blending anything i like to have all my colors open and ready to go so um if you think it's going to take you a long time this is just a little tip when I have all my paints open or if you're working outside or it's breezy or whatever, I like to keep my Mr. Bottle handy and every, every like five or 10 minutes just kind of mist over the tops of my paints so they don't dry up so quickly. Just a little tip. Um, okay. So are you ready to see what we're going to be blending into our blues? Plum cray cray. Okay, this is Plum Crazy from Dixie Belle. I like to call it Plum Cray Cray. And a little bit of Colonel Mustard, okay? A little bit of Colonel Mustard on the vanity with Plum Crazy. That was like a really bad clue joke. But anyways, so those are our Blendy Blend colors, okay? And you're probably still thinking she's insane, but we're about to find out. But you know, the great part is about it, if I don't like it, I'm just going to paint over it because it's just paint, but I have a feeling it's going to turn out pretty cool. So we'll find out. So Colonel Mustard, this nice mustard, vintagey mustard color, kind of looks like it belongs on a hot dog and Plum Crazy, one of my favorites. It's this beautiful, deep uh, pinkish fuchsia color, magenta, whatever you want to call it. Mm. So. Here we go. So tonight I'm going to be using uh, Dixie Bell's Synthetic Flat Mediums for my um, base coat colors um, the in the navy and the peacock. Okay, I'm going to be using flat mediums. These are kind of my go-to. They're my little uh, utilitarian brush, I guess. And then I just grabbed a... I just grabbed a bunch of chip brushes and a uh, bell brush to do my blendy blend and my blending. Um, the bell brush, 
I like to blend with it in small spaces. But lately I've been kind of digging the chip brushes to do the blendy blend because they're, I like a nice flat, low profile brush to get angles, okay? Which is what my blendy blend is all about. Getting the lines of the piece and the angles, okay? Um, kind of with precision and then you blend them out. I'll show you, okay? All right, so we got our flat mediums. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my Mr. Bottle Handy, okay? You wanna have water in a Mr. Bottle Handy, okay? You can get these on the Dixie Bell website as well. Um, it's pretty damp here, to be honest, and humid, so I probably am not gonna use too much water for misting. Um, not a lot of misty mist tonight, but who knows? I like to keep it handy just in case, you never know. So I'm gonna go ahead and start in with my um, In the Navy. And I'm gonna go ahead and get all these spots I missed on the first coat. I don't know if you can see those, but I sure can. It was like three in the morning when I was trying to do this first coat, you guys. So yes, um, I was tired and in a hurry, but it's okay. We're gonna solve that problem here on the second coat. And as you can see, I'm taking my colors and I'm just painting my second coat right over where I had my first coat, okay? Now, um, when working with all of this detail, which I've added in this situation. In case you missed the beginning of the video, I've added all of these moldings. They're would you bend moldings. Um, I wanted to add lots and lots of detail um, to the fronts of my very plain um, French provincial drawers. Okay, I love me a good French provincial, but sometimes a girl's just gotta have a little bit of, um, you know, some details or a lot of details. And if you know me, you know I say more is more because more is more so once i started putting on these details i kind of couldn't stop so i was determined to fill the whole fronts up as much as i could with my would you bin um and the reason why is because after i'm done blending my paint job um and i have that nice and ready to go how i want it i'm gonna put some fabulous metallic um, on my details and really highlight my details, my moldings and make them look super shimmery and awesome. Uh, I haven't quite yet decided how I'm going to do that. I may dry brush some, um, mo uh, moonshine metallics on top. I've got, um, moonshine metallics in, um, Caribbean is a really beautiful, deep blue, gorgeous metallic color. I could dry brush some of that on here. I don't know. You never know. Well, we're going to find out though. Um, so when you're painting these insane details, you really got to pounce. Okay. Pounce, 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 pounce in there because that is the best way to get in the details is just to pounce it in there from all angles. So as you saw, I didn't take my own advice last night at three in the morning and I did not look at this from all angles that's why i missed a bunch of spots so now i gotta kind of make sure i um fix my boo-boo and look at it from all the different angles underneath side to side from the top and make sure that i did not miss any spots which i'm hoping that i got them all hoping i'm a little more thorough this evening than i was last evening so okay um i've got my in the navy on my second coat i'm gonna go ahead and give it a little misty mist Keep it wet because I want my paint to be workable when I'm trying to blend it. I, you can't blend dry paint. Am I right? So we want it to be, um, nice and wet. And that's why I'm misting with the water. I'm going to bring in a little bit closer so you can see better. How's that? I don't think anybody's going to complain about seeing better, right? Okay. So now we're going to move on to our peacock peacock. And I love this color. It's so great. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and do my second coat in Peacock, just like I did my second coat in the Navy, um, of in the Navy, like right on top of where I did my first coat, okay? It doesn't have to be perfectly exactly where your first coat was, okay? I'm trying because that's roughly where I want my colors to fall, but if I, you know, get it a little out of place, that's all right. I'm not gonna cry about it, okay? All right, so. I'm really heavy handed with the paint. Um, if you're not, if you're very light handed with paint and do thin coats, 
You want to make sure that you are misting with water frequently because we want this paint to stay wet until we're done blending it, okay? Then it can dry all at once, but until then, we need it to be wet. So I'm going to get under here in case anybody looks underneath my draw and it'll be painted just like the rest. All right, so we're working on our second coat, pouncing into those details. Okay, and then I wanna get over here and I wanna make sure that I'm getting all the spots. I don't wanna miss any of the spots, so. Cause that's just kind of a bummer, you know, once you're all done and you finally got it all blended out to perfection, how you like it, how you want it. It looks great. And then you go to get, you get to sealing it and you find a little spot that you missed and you're like, dang it, that stinks. What do I do? You know? So let's prevent that by taking an extra minute and making sure we're not missing any spots, huh? All right. So now that we've got our peacock and are in the Navy on there, and missed no spots we're good okay so i'm gonna give it another little quick mist of water not too much not too little just enough i'm gonna go ahead and blend with my bell brush okay you can get this from dixie bell it is um great for colored waxes um you could do dixie dirt with this brush i like it for blending small areas okay so i got me a shop towel or old t-shirt whichever you prefer and we're just going to start blending right where the colors meet. You can either, uh, there's a few ways to go about blending your colors together. So on these kinds of details, I like to kind of pounce in almost a circular motion um, to get the colors to blend on the details, okay? So that's, that's how I like to blend on details. I start by just kind of pouncing where the colors meet, okay? And you don't have to worry about getting it perfect on your first pass. We're just trying to get the colors to start blending together, okay? We don't want that hard line. Okay, so there we go. Blending pretty good. Blues always seem to blend pretty good together. All right, so now we're just going to kind of clean that up and blend it out just a little bit more. So the colors, the hard edge where the colors met is gone. But now I just kind of want to blend it out a little bit more so that it's a little more, oh, cloudy, I guess I would say, dreamy, cloudy. Okay, this is shedding. I'm going to go ahead and switch to, um, I'm going to grab a premium chip brush. This is a Dixie Belle premium chip brush. Sometimes my new bell brushes shed and I did not condition it. So I'm going to go ahead and switch. So we're going to switch to our premium chip brush. Another one of my favorite brushes from Dixie Bell. It's like a whole like three or four dollars, I think. And it's one of my favorite brushes. Good for all kinds of stuff. They're good for um, primers. I like to primer with a premium chip brush. Sometimes I like to blendy blend with a chip brush. It just depends on what I'm working on, really. With all this detail, it it's, seems to work pretty good with one of these chip brushes. Because the hairs are long enough that it kind of gets down in those details, if that makes sense. So we're just kind of pouncing around here, blending those colors together, getting them to, to mix and kind of move around a little bit. We want to bring the darker color down into the lighter color. And then, of course, get a little bit of that lighter color up into the darker color. And that is essentially what you're doing when you're blending is getting the colors to kind of, um, oh, what's the word? Um, uh, da, 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 da. What's the word? To kind of, uh, I don't know. Uh, I can't think of the word. Besides obviously mix or blend together. Contaminate, I guess. So you're trying to get the darker color to contaminate the lighter color a little bit and vice versa. Now, usually you don't want to contaminate your paint, <laughs> but when you blend in, that's what you got to do. All right, so that is looking about how I want it. And you can just kind of clean up the 
blend a little bit. How you see, I'm picking out bell brush bristles here. Sorry. Condition your brushes, folks, so you don't get so many bristles in your work. Okay, so there we go. So now we get to do the fun blendy blendy part. Let me see if I can get you even more on this link. So there we go. Ooh, I like this new tripod, okay? Yes, the colors to marry. That's a great, great word. Marry, the, marry together or kind of um, melt together. That sounds much better than contaminate. <laughs> All right, so there we go. There is our base, and now we're gonna take a little bit of our uh, plum cray cray, okay? And I'm sorry if I'm missing any questions. I'll go back later and answer any um, that I may have missed. So, um, yes, yeah, ah, commingle, yes, yes. Hi, my name is Peacock. Hi, my name is in the Navy. You wanna hang out? Yes. That's, that's the blending. All right, so now I'm gonna just grab not even premium chip brushes. These are just the Dixie Bell, um, I call them cheapy chip brushes. That's probably not the most um, endearing term, but that's what they are. They are just the economy chip brushes from Dixie Bell, and they're perfect to add accent colors to the blendy blend. So we're gonna go ahead and start with a little of the plum cray cray, and I'm just dipping Dipping the tip of my brush in it and wiping the excess off on the um, edge of my jar. So you don't need a ton, okay? You can always add more, and we may do that, but we're going to start with just a little bit, okay? And I, when, I, when I'm doing this, when I'm adding my accent colors, I like to pick um, lines in the piece, okay? Either these curves or, you know, maybe this swirly guy here or this um, right angle. I like to pick lines in the piece, whether it's the detailing or the drawer itself, something that I want to kind of um, highlight, okay? I don't just randomly slap on colors. That's a thing, you could do that, but that's not how I, um, that's not how I, I'm just trying to explain to you how I decide where the colors go. So I like to pick a spot. I'm gonna pick this little right angle here, okay? So I'm gonna brush on my, <coughs> <coughs> forgot my water, sorry. Brush on my plum cray cray. All right. And notice, um, normally when I'm blending, I like to misty mist with the water. I'm not doing that right now, okay? Because I want my paint to kind of start to dry up. I don't want it super duper wet at this point. Um, let's choose a little uh, curve here. A little curve. Let's accent your curves. Okay, baby? That's what we're going to do right here. And then I'm going to grab my, I'm going to grab another chip brush here. Mm, which one do we want? This one looks like it'll work. I'm going to grab another chip brush here. And now I'm just going to kind of blend my accent colors into the background. Okay. Very lightly blendy blended into the background. Okay. You don't need a heavy hand. You just want to very lightly, um, almost as if, okay, sorry guys, I'm going to alienate you real quick. Almost as if you're putting on some makeup, you know, you don't grind it into your face. You just kind of um, brush it on a little bit lightly. That's what we're doing here, okay? And I'm very heavy handed all the time, so it's been a, um, it takes a little bit of effort for me to be light handed like this, but you got to be, okay? Just very lightly and gently. And if you find that you have still a little bit too much paint on your brush, I'm wiping it off every few strokes. I know you can't see that. I'm sorry because I'm so close up. But um, if you find you have a little bit extra on there and you haven't wiped it off, you can use it and kind of dry brush it on some of the other details. I have found that makes a very iridescent kind of look. Um, so... So see how I have a little bit of the Plum Crazy on my brush here, just a tiny bit. And I'm just kind of dry brushing it almost onto this little spot. It's just so subtle, but it adds, you know, it just adds just a lot of dimension and depth, I guess you could say. So let's go ahead and blendy blend this in before it dries up on me. 
So just gently kind of back and forth following that curve where we put our plum cray cray. And here's what I'm talking about. See, I've got a little bit on my brush and I'm not wiping off and I can kind of dry brush it onto my little emblem here, just a little bit. And it just gives you a very tiny hint of that color, okay? Okay, so we're gonna blend it out, but here's where I'm gonna stop, okay? This is the point where most people keep going and then they say, oh my gosh, what am I doing wrong? I hate this, it's not right. It's because you need to stop while you're ahead, okay? So I'm gonna stop because if I keep going, it's gonna blend my purple into my blue too much. And then it won't be, you won't see that color anymore. It'll just kind of, you know, blend into it and disappear. And depending on what colors you're blending, it might just muddy it up and turn brown. You know, um, if, if I were to be using, you know, orange or Florida orange or something um, like that that doesn't blend into to, um, blue very well, it's just gonna turn brown. So blue and blue and pink will just turn purple, but I don't want purple. I want plum cray cray. So I want it a little bit darker. So I'm going to do a second round on this guy. And I actually like looking at it on my screen. I think I want to come up a little bit like this too. Changing the plan just a little bit. Don't freak out. It's okay to change a plan. And it's okay if something doesn't turn out exactly how you envisioned it. Okay. Hopefully it turns out better. Okay. So we're going to blend that out. And we're going to blendy, 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 blendy. And then up here. Boom. And boom. Okay, so now I'm going to stop before I start to question my existence here. Okay, okay, so now we get to blendy blend in some kernel mustard. I'm going to scoot you back just a little bit. Some kernel mustard, okay? So um, the kernel mustard, I'm hoping, will just add a little bit of warmth to this piece. Um, it's pretty cool right now. Um, not cool as in awesome, but cool as in like cool colors. So um, I want to add a little bit of warmth for some yellow. So I'm just going to kind of come in right here and follow this little plum crazy line. Continue that plum crazy line. And then maybe... Hmm, let's see, what does it look like on this? Let's let's kind of continue this plum crazy line here too. Okay, it's okay to overlap just a little bit, you know, colors that you've already laid down. That's all right. It's not gonna hurt anything. If you're doing a blend of any sort for the first time, I highly recommend using colors that are um, very, very blendable or blend well, which um, if you have a color wheel, and you look at the color wheel, colors that are next to each other or very close in proximity to each other, those, those are in the same kind of family and they should blend together um, easy. So for example, um, pink and red or um, orange and, uh, or Florida orange and flamingo, or you know, like orange and peach or, you know, colors that are close in hue. Okay, I'm gonna give this just a little bit of water. I'm busy talking and I let it dry up on me, but um, colors that blend together. So two blues, two greens, green and blue, black and gray, um, colors that are similar will help you learn how to blend. And once you have your technique down, then you can move on to the more crazy colors. Okay. Okay. So I'm thinking up here in this little area we might be able to benefit from just a little bit more kernel mustard and we could probably blend this out just a little bit more the reason why I chose these colors that I did was because they are essentially family members of primary colors so the primary colors are red green and blue right so I've got plum crazy which is pink, which is in the family of red, kernel mustard, which is yellow, and then the two blues. Okay, so when you mix primary colors together, depending on which ones they are, they create the secondary colors. So when I chose these, I knew that kernel mustard mixed with blue would make green. See how you see a little bit of greenish kind of tint there? And yellow 
the kernel mustard and the plum crazy mixed together would create kind of an orange. And then the um, plum crazy and the, and the um, blues would create like a purple. Okay, so I purposely chose these colors knowing that if they blend together, they're gonna create secondary colors, which I kind of wanted because I want this to have almost, uh, almost an iridescent or oil slick kind of look when I'm all done blending it. So that is how and why I chose these colors. Now, I don't always have a reason why I choose my colors, okay? Sometimes I have no clue. I just think, oh, that'll look good together. But in this case, I actually had a reason. Okay, so we're gonna blend that out a little bit mo. Get our hairs out of our paint. There you go. All right. Okay, now I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop right there and that drawer is donezo. Okay, so now we're gonna wait for that drawer to dry and seal it and then we can put our metallics on. So. Depending how, I'm not going to decide what kind of metallic I'm going to do on this piece until it's all done and dry. So, um, because I want to see, you know, if it's got all these crazy colors on it, I'll probably just do a simple gold or um, uh, like a translucent, iridescent. I don't, I don't know yet. Maybe even copper. I don't know. That's the fun part, is it? We don't know. We're going to decide later. Okay, so if you're just tuning in, um, I've got my would you bend moldings on my French Provincial um, previously flat fronted drawers. I added these moldings on to all of the drawers to give it lots of detail because I like more and more is more in my opinion. So I really like to push the gaudy levels. If you have not, if you can't tell, I really like to, uh, I really like all the things. Okay. I like to add all the things. So after that, I primed with two coats of slick stick because this piece was not real wood. It was finished with like a sort of laminate type um, finish as most French provincial pieces are. Um, and now, now I'm working on my second coat, okay? I had my first coat of peacock and in the navy where I just kind of laid the colors about where I wanted them roughly. And now I'm working on my second coat um, and I'm keeping my colors about in the same spots as I did on my first coat, okay? It doesn't have to be perfectly in the same spots, but I do want to make sure I, I hit all of those little details um, and crevices that I missed on my first coat because I was super duper tired at 3 a.m. <coughs> <coughs> so you want to look at it from all the angles. See, when I look at it from above, from this side, I see all these spots that I totally missed, okay, underneath. Okay, you gotta pounce, pounce, pounce that color in there. That's how you get it, you pounce to pounce the color in there, okay? That is the easiest way, I think, to get the color in the details anyway. So, and I'm gonna move on to my In the Navy and do our second coat of In the Navy. And same deal, painting it right on top of our first coat of where in the navy um, was and pouncing it in those details. I see several spots that I missed back there. Um, and looking at it underneath, getting those spots from this angle, from all the angles, okay? You wanna look from all the angles to make sure you get in all those little details. And when you're confident that you didn't miss any spots, now we can blend, a blend, a blend. All right, there we go. I'm gonna take my premium chip brush that I'm using to blend the background colors together. And right where the colors meet, okay? That line right where the colors meet, that's where we're going to kind of start to blur the line, so to speak. We're just gonna blur the line where the colors meet, okay? Like, that's literally what we're doing. We're getting rid of that harsh line and at the moment, I'm just kind of pouncing my brush to do that. It's gonna blend that line for me. And there we go. So now that the colors have started to blend together, we can kind of try to fine tune it a little bit, wiping my brush off of the excess paint so I'm not just pushing around the excess paint. Um, and now I'm just gonna kind of fine tune it a little bit, 
give it some brush strokes here, brush strokes there, get my colors to blend together. And um, what I'm doing now is trying to get rid of, so, okay, see, see when you uh, brush, see that brush strokes? There's like those, those brush strokes in the paint. When you're fine tuning your blend, that's what you're trying to get rid of. And you just need to be real gentle. You don't have to go crazy. Just be real gentle to get rid of those brush strokes. Because I think a really good, nice um, blend, you know, you can, is pretty seamless. You can't see where those brush strokes are, right? I mean, unless that's the look you're going for, and, and, and that's fine. But we're not going for that look. We're going for a nice, seamless, seamless blend to blend. All right, so I'm gonna give it a little bit more water. Not a lot, just a little bit. Just a little bit. And I think we're about ready to go, uh, you know, move over to our plum, plum cray cray. Okay, so plum cray cray on a chip brush. Just the tip of the, just the tip of the chip brush is all you need. Wipe all the excess off on the edge of your jar or whatever you're painting out of. Some people are ad really super adult and they paint out of, they pour their paint into cups or other vessels and they don't paint directly out of their, um, their product. <laughs> and that ain't, I ain't that guy, okay? I paint right out of my paint jars. I know, I'm so terrible. So let's see. Now we're gonna pick a little angle to kind of highlight here. Let's go with this one. This little right angle here we got. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, and now we're gonna take our cheapy chip brush that we were using um, to blend our plum cray cray. Or if you wanna be all proper, plum crazy, and just kind of gently dab that plum crazy into the background. Okay, so give it a couple back and forths. Give it a couple um, pounces, but just very gently, okay? Just very gently blending that accent color into the background, but not too much, okay? All right, so there we go. Mm -mm. Not too much. See, now I'm, I should have stopped. I should have stopped. <laughs> should have stopped. So, you know how I told you more is more is kind of my philosophy, more is more. In the case of blending, more is not always more. Sometimes you want to stop while you're ahead, so I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. But I want to darken up my plum crazy just a little bit, so I'm going to do a second pass. Remember I said it's easier to add more than it is to take away. So you want to start small, and if you want to add more, like I want this to be a little bit darker, that's what I'm going to do, okay? Just a little bit more. And we'll just kind of blend that in, gently kind of dab at it. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so somebody, somebody tell me stop because I like it. I don't know why I, I'm not, I don't know why I'm continuing. Okay, stop and done. Now we're going to do our Colonel Mustard. Colonel Mustard, little bit on the tip of your brush. Wipe the excess off onto the edge of your jar or whatever vessel you're painting out of. And now we're going to, oh, I don't want to just go around the frames of it on every drawer. That's a little predictable. So we're just going to go ahead and just kind of follow this plum crazy line that we got going on here. And I don't know, maybe a little bit right here too. What do you think? About right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to take my... Chippy McChip brush here and start to blend that in. Nope, I'm gonna give it a little mist of water here. Drying up, drying up on me real quick. Okay, so we're gonna gently, oh so gently, just kind of pounce at that kernel mustard and blend it in to our background a little bit. Okay, same thing with up here, just little bit of very gentle strokes and then on the details just some pounce 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 to get that to blend into the background 
just enough. Okay, you don't wanna blend it all the way into the background to where it disappears or muddies it up. You just wanna blend it in enough to where it, um, you know, is very, a little more subtle. What do you think? Should I add a little bit more kernel? I think we're good there, right? I think we're good on the kernel. I don't want it to be too insane rainbowy, but um, <laughs> it's kind of going. Okay, so what do you say we do? One more drawer, okay? We're gonna do one mo draw, and then I'll hop off here. So if you have any quite, oh, oh, okay. Well, um, so I got kernel mustard in my hair, which is kind of funny because the rest of my hair is the color of the paint I'm using. That's crazy, right? Creepy. All right, we're gonna do one mo, one mo draw, okay? One mo draw. We're gonna do this one down here. And I'll bring you a little closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. All right, um, turn this just a little bit this way, okay? And um, <clears throat> let's see, move back a little bit. There we go, how's that? How's that? Okay, <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and start with our um, peacock and do our second coat of peacock. Okay. Second coat of peacock, and this time I'm gonna not miss any spots. I'm gonna get all the spots. I'm going to get all the spots. Wow. I must have been really tired last night because I missed so many places, so many little crevices I missed. Okay, so on my second coat here, the first coat is for coverage and for kind of laying down the areas where you want to have specific colors, okay? So you kind of have a plan for coat number two. Okay, so boom, boom, boom. We're chugging along right along with our peacock on coat number two. Let's make sure we don't miss any spots, okay? So in order to not miss any spots, you need to look at it from all the angles, underneath, left, right, top, bottom, all the things, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a quick mist of water, okay, to keep it wet. We wanna keep our paint wet in order to blendy blend. And now we're gonna go ahead and do our second coat on our uh, In the Navy and make sure that we're not missing any spots. I cannot stress that enough because I know the pain of missing spots. I know that pain. I feel it right here. And I'm trying to prevent that for you by stressing, don't miss the spots. Okay, so from underneath, get all the spots. Okay from the right side, or I guess left on your screen. And then from the left side, which would be right side on your screen. Okay, and the top. Okay, pounce, 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 pounce from the top. Okay, so we got all the spots. I'm pretty sure of it, pretty sure of it. All right, so now we're gonna take our premium chip brush here that we're using to do the blending of the blues and right where the colors meet here, okay? Right where the colors meet, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of blur that line. Usually a blurred line is a bad thing, but when you're talking about blending paint, blurred lines are good. Okay, so remember that. Blur the line in um, your paint, that's a good thing. Blur the line in a relationship, that's a bad thing. Um, just an example. Okay, so. Okay, so now that we got our line blurred, we're gonna just kind of uh, blend our colors just a little bit more by kind of pouncing and kind of just lightly 
See, it's a little, it's a little different on details. Like I've heard people say, oh man, I really want to try blending, but this piece has so much detail. It scares me, blah, blah, blah. It's actually easier to blend on details because you don't have to, mm, I don't know how to describe it. It's just easier because you can just kind of pounce the colors together. Okay. So don't be scared to blend on details. It's super easy. I mean, look, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Okay. So there we go. There's our blues. Okay, voila, voila. Now we're going to add our Blendy Blend accent colors, which if you are just tuning in, are plum crazy. Okay, I've got a little bit on my brush and I've wiped the excess off. And let's see, where do we wanna accent this time? Let's just go right in the middle here. Let's just go for right in the middle. A little accent, that little feathery, swirly guy. And maybe a little bit right here. So, sort of opposites, almost. Okay? So, sort of kind of opposites here. I'll let you, I'll move you up so you can see, <clears throat> so you can see both drawers together, how they, how they come together. <clears throat> because as I pick where I'm putting each color on each drawer, I do take the other drawers into consideration because I don't want them to all look exactly the same. So, I kind of want to keep, the placement of my accent colors different. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my cheapy chip brush that we're blending with, and I'm just gonna kind of blend my plum crazy into my background. Okay. So very lightly, and then on the details, you just kind of pounce it in to blend it. Okay, and then we'll just kind of give it almost like a dry, almost like a dry brush of it. Almost like we're dry brushing to kind of just further blend it into those details. What do you think? So it's just kind of pounce. I'm going to give it a little mist of water right there on the corner. And maybe a little bit more peacock. It's okay to add uh, more paint if you go a little overboard with your accent colors. It's okay to add more of your background colors. It's not going to hurt anything. I won't tell anybody. I won't tell. Okay. So there we've got our Plum Crazy. I'm thinking I might want to add just a hair more Plum Crazy right here in this little tiny spot. Just a tiny bit. So when I say tiny bit, I just mean like, just like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to kind of pounce that in. Beep, 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 beep. Okay. So now I'm going to get my kernel mustard and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to grab a little bit of kernel mustard on the tip of my brush. And I'm thinking, let's go ahead and just do this little corner here. Okay. And maybe, I don't know. I don't want to get too symmetrical with it. Maybe this little area right there. Okay. So I'm just kind of dabbing a little bit of kernel on. Crazy. What is she doing? That looks insane. Well, we're just going to blend it in. Okay. A little bit of dab here. A little bit of pounce there, a little bit of strokes here and there. Okay. And then we will get our kernel blendy blended in. Okay. And like I said, if you are like, mm, maybe I put a little bit too much kernel right there. You can just add on a little bit more of your base coat color. Okay. Just like that, see? See how easy that was? Boom. Boom. Done and done. Okay, so let's blend in this little kernel bit over here.
Okay. So just kind of pounce to pounce. I don't know. What do you think? Um, do I need more kernel in that little spot or nah? More kernel or nah? Maybe a little more plum cray cray right there. Plum Crazy's like, uh, excuse me, Colonel, you took over all of my spot, personal space here. So we're going to give Plum Crazy his personal space back. Okay. And then we're going to call it a day on that there draw. Okay. So cool. Oh, no, up, no, no. So now you can see all the drawers together right? <clears throat> Not all of them, but the three that we painted. And <clears throat> see how pretty they're coming? That's like a iridescent, rainbowy, you know, kind of deal. Mm, I like it. I want me some rainbowy. Um, so anyways, <laughs> that's how you do some blendy blend with some jewel tones, okay? And like I've said before, and I'll tell you again, um, <clears throat> maybe all these crazy colors aren't your jam. Okay. That's all right. You can do this with any colors. So, um, you can take a base coat of sandbar and fluff, blend that together. And you can add, you know, a little bit of hurricane gray, a little bit of drop cloth, a little bit of French linen. You can do this with neutrals. You can do it with all grays. You can do it with all blues, with all reds, all pinks. You don't have to choose all these crazy rainbow colors. You can do this with all browns, all neutrals, you know, white, brown, gray, you know, whatever. So, um, I do know all the crazy colors, not everyone's jam. So, um, try it, get you a piece of practice wood and some colors or neutrals or whatever you want and just try it. Okay. Um, it's a lot of fun. So anyways, thanks for hanging out with me for um, a little bit on your Sunday night. I hope you have an amazing week and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And I'll see you next Sunday at 8 p.m. EST on the Dixie Bell Paint Company main page. Okay, bye-bye.